Hey everyone, uh, so we're going to get started. I'm Bill Allison, Editorial Director here at the Sunlight Foundation. I'm joined by uh, Nancy Watsman, uh, who's going to be um, also fielding questions and, uh, and, and piping in at times. Um, and we wanted to uh, really take this time to uh, show you some tools that might be useful for you, especially as we come down the wire uh, for the election. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to show you a site that we do called Follow the Unlimited Money, which is really good for tracking outside spending. And, and the focus here is really kind of on how you can use these tools quickly to get information, um, uh, you know, to, to add context, to get a number, to figure out who a group is that's suddenly spending in your, uh, in your area. Um, the second site, and it's actually I've called an audible, uh, we're going to have Influence Explorer first which is a site that brings together a lot of different campaign finance and lobbying data. So if there's a big contributor who's suddenly giving to a, in a congressional race you're following, you can find out you know, who they are and a little background on what they may be interested in. And at the last, we'll show you a, a party time, which is actually sort of a preview because we'll be doing a webinar in depth on party time in about, uh, in actually in two weeks from today. Um, so why don't we get started? And I thought we would begin uh, with the big, um, um, uh, you know, a little bit of the big picture of kind of where we are in terms of money. Um, we're seeing this is the, the map of Senate races from the FEC, and you can kind of see, you know, how much these candidates have raised uh, for the House and the Senate, and it is a lot of money. Um, unlike the, actually, the presidential race, presidential candidates have not yet surpassed the totals that were raised in uh, 2008, although they assuredly will. Uh, members of Congress are well ahead of the clip that they were on in um, uh, uh, in the 2008, which was the last presidential election, the, the pace they set then uh, overall. And I think I believe they're also ahead of the pace they set in 2010. Uh, this information comes from the Federal Election Commission. It's just a summary that they put out. This was at the end of uh, the second quarter of, of 2012, and it just kind of shows you a breakdown of how much people are raising. As you can see for Congress, um, it's at about uh, 1.8, uh, um, I'm sorry, $1.2 billion. That's up from where it was in 2010, which was a very exp uh, expensive congressional election and way more than it was in, in 2008. And, you know, anecdotally, we've heard here in Washington that, and in part it's because members are worried about super PACs, but that members have been raising money and spending more time raising money than they have in past election cycles. So. It's something to keep uh, your eye on when you're thinking about the outside spending is to not forget that these guys are raising a ton of money themselves. Um, one of the things, though, that we see is that political action committees are pouring in uh, just a huge amount of money. Um, uh, and this is, a, again, a breakdown from that same uh, Federal Election Commission chart. There's a link, incidentally, in the PowerPoint. And anybody who wants a copy of the PowerPoint, actually, I think we'll be sending it out to everybody. And this is just loaded up with links for all these different tools we're going to show you in the exact place on our site so you can get to this stuff. But anyway, um, you know, as we're seeing a lot of PAC money, and this actually includes um, super PACs, these numbers. Um, so you can really kind of see that, you know, PACs are a hugely important part, but it's also the traditional PACs that give to members of Congress that represent special interests, that are the tried and true, um, you know, kind of the bedrock that incumbents uh, raise money from are still hugely important players. So I guess the, the takeaway here is, is that to not forget about the old traditional PACs when you're looking at you know, groups like super PACs. And that kind of brings us to the first resource I wanted to, take about, to talk about, which is a site that we do called Follow the Unlimited Money. And it's online at followtheunlimitedmoney.com. Uh, and again, there's a link in this presentation. But this is a, a really useful source uh, of information and all kinds of different information on individual spend, on outside spending groups, whether they're super PACs or nonprofits, uh, you know, the kind that don't disclose their donors. Uh, if you're following a race or if you're looking for spending in a state, uh, this is you know, the one-stop shopping to get all kinds of information. And one of the things, actually, I've done a number of trainings on this site, but one of the things I haven't spent enough time doing is talking to people about, you know, the, the controls and the, the wealth of what this site offers. And it is a really, really useful uh, tool for finding out all kinds of different information. And one thing, uh, and I'm going to get my little tool, um, this first button here for the overview, 
I have so many times when reporters call and ask and you know, and are talking and saying, you know, well, how much overall has been raised and how much has been spent and how much by, the, by you know, nonprofits and, and so on. Um, this site actually has all of that broken down for you. Uh, the information is scraped straight from the Federal Election Commission site. It's updated frequently every single day. And the overview will tell you, uh, you know, give you that kind of context and break it down. Uh, you know, you can get the entire country, you can get particular races, you can get particular states, uh, you can get different kinds of committees. So this really kind of tells you uh, how much is being spent. Um, and on that same overview page, you can scroll down for what we call dark money. And this is spending by those groups that do not disclose their donors, like Crossroads GPS, which is the 501c4 tied to American Crossroads that Karl Rove runs. And there are a host of others, Patriot Majority on the left, uh, that aren't disclosing donors. So this will show you, um, you, know, uh, you know, how much they've spent. Uh, and the other nice thing about it is there is a link uh, at the bottom of this table. Uh, it's, it's highlighted here in this box, non-committees. And if you click on that, not only do you see this nice graphic um, um, uh, illustration, you can go to a page that lists all the different groups, shows how much they've spent, what they've spent opposing or uh, supporting different candidates of different parties. You can get links to where they file at the Federal Election Commission. Um, but, you know, the, again, one of the key things I wanted to focus here is note the context. I mean, what this shows you is, um, you know, so we've got, you know, with the super PACs, you know, how much they've spent on independent expenditures, how much is negative spending opposing a candidate. We can see overwhelmingly it's negative. Uh, with those non-committee FEC filers, the dark money groups like uh, Crossroads GPS and uh, the other nonprofits, you can see that they're even more negative than the super PACs. Um, there's also a page, and there's a link uh, again for this, where we break down the total independent expenditures by party orientation. So are they spending, you know, so American Crossroads is much more aligned with the right. How much are they spending? Uh, and you can see that um, the ones that are Republican aligned are spending uh, much more than Democratic aligned super PACs, which is something that we've been hearing all along. But here's where you can get the numbers. And again, they're updated almost constantly. So, you know, you can get the latest number if you're working on a story on deadline. Um, another feature of this site, in addition to all of this context that we provide and, and kind of the big picture, is that you can drill down into, into uh, the numbers and actually get the raw data uh, from the FEC through this site uh, in you know, pretty much one easy step. Um, when you click on that download box uh, on the, in the green, and I always, actually, I always miss it. I think we have to make it brighter because uh, I always forget where it is because it's not very, uh, maybe we need to make those letters like bold white or something. But um, when you click on that link, you get to a place where you can download um, a whole data in a whole bunch of different formats. And this uh, uh, goes, you know, we start with, um, you can jump to and download data by individual super PACs. You can download it by states. You can download it for particular races. So if you want to see like how much is being spent in the Virginia Senate race or in the, uh, the Sherman Berman race out in California, which is a highly contested house race or any other race that you want to look at, um, you can download this file and get it. One important thing to note about uh, this data, um, except for primary spending by super PACs on presidential candidates, they do not show up in the state files because the FEC in its wisdom thinks that the presidential election is a national election. So super PACs do not have to disclose that they're heavily spending money in, say, Colorado or Pennsylvania or Wisconsin or Virginia or any of the battleground states, Florida, uh, that just appears as national numbers. So if you're following the presidential race, we can't help you with that, although we will have a webinar next week uh, to tell you about a new tool Sunlight is putting out that will help you track some of the spending on ads uh, by states in the presidential contest. And so I'm putting a little pressure on my colleague Joshua Hatch, who's doing that next week. but. Um, uh, that should be, uh, but that'll be really helpful for tracking presidential and also congressional spending and state spending as well. Okay, getting back to this presentation. Um, another tab that we have, and you see it's labeled right there, expenditures. You can see the latest expenditures that we have just pulled in uh, in the last, um, you know, a couple of hours. Um, uh, this, the scraper goes pretty frequently throughout the day. 
And this will show you, you know, what's being spent. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that an ad is being is airing that day when there uh, an expenditure shows up, but it does show you, um, you know, when they're reporting them to the Federal Election Commission, and you can kind of see all the different things, all the different activity going in. So this is a good way to follow um, what the latest activity is. But there's an easier way to do exactly the same thing using this site, and you can use this if you have a smartphone or an email address. And this is something that we do through a, uh, in part through a site that we call Scout. But if you can sign up for an FEC alert, and this is the page where you would do it, and here's the search box, and I'll take you through the steps, which are really easy to do. Um, the first step is you type in the name of the candidate you're looking for. And I just typed in Tim Kaine's last name. And you can see that you get Kaine for Virginia, uh, Virginia Senate uh, 2012, which is supporting Timothy Kane. This is the Tim Kane. These are um, joint fundraising committees for the most part. Uh, some of them, though, some super PACs do mention the candidates that they're supporting. So you can see all of those different um, um, uh, uh, committees that and you may want to follow all of them. You may just want to follow his, uh, his congressional committee. So you know, click on the ones that you want to supply. It'll move them over here. And then you can choose, do you want monthly and the 24, 48 hour notices, 48 hour contribution reports and so on. And remember, we are getting really, really close to the election. This is the time of the year when the campaigns start filing those uh, 48 hour notices of new contributions and new spending. You know, it's not just the quarterly reports anymore, or the monthly reports for monthly filers. We're going to start seeing a big, huge upsurge in activity in terms of what's going on in candidates filing at the FEC. This system, um, once you've signed up for an account in Scout, and that's the next thing I want to show you, once you've, uh, and let me go back really quick. So once you've um, decided that you're going to, you know, what committee do you want, you just click that Get Alert button, and it takes you to uh, our site Scout, which is uh, a, a hugely useful site for tracking all kinds of different things, and I won't go into everything, but, um, but one of the things we're using it for is to let you follow Federal Election Commission filings. So it asks you to import a feed. Does this look right? So I just want his uh, Senate campaign. I go ahead and click the Create Alert. And it takes me to a page where you can either log in or sign up for a new account. It's perfectly free. Um, we don't, we're not going to send you uh, all kinds of email or spam if you don't want it. You can just click. You, know, you don't have to get updates about Scout features or the Sunlight Foundation. But you can go ahead and click that, sign up, create your email account. And then um, once you've done that, um, you can decide how you want to get alerts. You can put in a phone number. You can get buzzed on your smartphone every time the FEC gets a new filing from Tim Kaine. Uh, or you can get the uh, email notifications. If you sign up for a ton of things, it may make more sense to only get them once a day. Um, but you know, I'm the kind of person that I want to know when it just has just come out. And this will really let you stay on top of what's going on at the FEC with candidates that you're following and with the congressional races you're following. And every single candidate that files with the FEC, you can sign up for every single super PAC. Uh, and I believe you can even sign up for the dark money groups, the, you know, the US Chamber of Commerce uh, being another example, uh, and see what their latest activity is. And you'll get you know, whatever filings come out from them. So that can be a, a really, really useful tool in terms of following the money. Uh, and then really quickly, let's just, uh, because we said this was how to follow congressional races, so let's start drilling down into a congressional race. And the easiest way to do that, or one of the ways to do that, you can choose a tab and look at outside spending by state. And one of the things I think that's really interesting, and again, we're just tracking the outside money here. This is not the candidate's money. But one of the things that's really interesting here is, is that you know, the states that we hear that aren't even being contested and super PACs aren't spending any money there, and you know, the presidential candidates aren't even showing up in California or New York to campaign because there's foregone conclusions. Well, look at all the outside spending in California. And this is all around congressional races. Same thing with New York, same thing with Illinois, same thing with Arizona. And one of the things which I would really have to say about this is, is that <clears throat> um, um, when you're looking at, um, uh, at these races, um, the outside groups can have a much bigger impact on a congressional race than they can on uh, the presidential race. I mean, if you look at what uh, Barack Obama and Mitt Romney have raised collectively and the party committees have raised, they have no trouble getting their message out. They have a ton of money. 
and the outside groups, you know, unless the, we have another swift boat vets that materializes in the last 30 days, which I'm not saying is entirely beyond the realm of possibility, but the outside groups are really, you know, um, not as critical in the presidential race as they are in some of these congressional races where if you drop in uh, $100,000 in the tail end of a race in a congressional district, you can really have an impact. So moving ahead, um, so let's click on a state and look at what we get when we do that. And I'm picking Virginia because I live in Virginia. And as you can see, you've got um, you know, the Virginia Senate race and how much has been spent. Uh, you do have that presidential primary <laughs> and then the different House races where there's outside spending. So let's choose a race to look at. And we will click on uh, the Virginia Senate because that's what has the most money. And so what we get is a summary of what's being spent against, uh, or a summary of what each group is spending in the race. We've got Crossroads, Grassroots Policy, uh, that's Crossroads GPS, the Carl Rove Group, their tops, uh, U.S. Chamber of Commerce, uh, the Majority Pack going against uh, George Allen. So we can see all the groups that are involved in this election and are running ads uh, in Virginia to influence uh, the outcome of the race. By clicking on a candidate, you can get a summary of how much is being spent, uh, you know, supporting him or opposing him. Uh, you can also see, once again, that same summary of groups, which is uh, pretty valuable. And let's go ahead and click on a group so we can get a look at what you get when you take a profile of one of these outside spending groups. Um, and this is one, this is a majority pack, and um, not particularly, um, um, uh, no particular reason that I picked them, except that, you know, it shows you, first of all, that we label it as a super PAC, and if it's not a super PAC, it won't have that label. Uh, we tell you how often it files with the FEC. Um, we show you that you can, um, you know, you can jump to the independent expenditures uh, or download them. And the last thing here is you get the independent expenditure sum summary. How much are they spending on negative ads? How much are they spending positive ads? Uh, and the party breakdown of that spending. <clears throat> and again, that can be very useful when you, if a new group, you know, chimes into a race, uh, running ads against uh, a member of Congress, you can say, you know, how much they've spent and what, you know, whether they're a negative group or a uh, positive group. There aren't many uh, things like that. Oh, and here I have it much better so you can see it much more easily. Um, uh, so, and again, we have the link to the FEC filings, the cash on hand it has, and I mentioned these, you, know, you can, uh, this will take you to the independent expenditures on the page. And I think we have a slide showing what they look like further on and, or you can download that information. Um, I just want to say one thing about FEC filings. Um, um, one of the things that you'll find or that we expect that you're going to find in this race is groups popping up that we haven't heard of that start spending in the tail end. I mean, that's a very possible thing. We saw some of that happening in 2010. Uh, we have no idea, you know, you can set up a super PAC in one day, uh, just file with the FEC and you can start spending like crazy. And there may be these groups out there that have done this uh, or that are, you know, just sitting on the sidelines waiting for, um, uh, you know, to start spending in the, again in the tail end. Uh, if a group crops up that you haven't heard of, just put it into the search box. Um, and this is one America's Road Ahead uh, that I just I really kind of picked at random. But look at the spending pattern. Obviously, this is earlier. But they kind of came out of nowhere, and all of a sudden, they're spending, um, you know, a, a, you know, not a huge amount of money, but, you know, $40,000 isn't, uh, you know, depending on the district where they're spending, and it's actually a relatively rural district, that can have a big impact. Um, one of the reasons, one of the things that you can do if you have a situation like this, go to the FEC filings. I mean, click on that link. Uh, because that's going to be the place where you're going to find some information about a group if you're trying to do reporting on them uh, to try to follow who they are, find out what they're, uh, you know, what kind of who's behind them and what they're doing. And this is what the FEC page looks like. Um, let me just make sure that we're there. Um, and you can see, uh, look for the statement of organization because this is, um, this is the, um, the language that they, they use or the, the, um, the document they file with the FEC telling them, who, telling the FEC and the world who they are. And what you get on these things is uh, you get names, phone numbers, sometimes a website for a committee, sometimes an e or always an email. And you can begin to track down, you know, who are these guys and try to figure out, you know, from the name of the treasurer, um, 
uh, or the name of the, uh, um, you know, sometimes there's a, a second custodian of records. You can kind of find out a little bit about them. And, you know, note this is a group that's spending money in, uh, I believe it's in Iowa, and um, you've got it set up in, uh, in Great Falls, Virginia. So that tells you something right there um, that can be useful. Uh, and even those nonprofits, those shadowy outside groups, do have to tell you something. I mean, they have to give you an address which you can Google. Uh, and, you know, a lot of times some of these nonprofits are associated with other nonprofits or it'll be in a, a place where there's a labor union or a law firm or something, but it'll give you at least some idea who else is there. And they also will give you a name of the person filling out the form. So again, it gives you something to go on. I mean, it's not a whole lot, but um, it's better than nothing. For the groups that do disclose their donors, and I mentioned this, uh, you know, these boxes are just really handy on the Super PAC pages. Um, you can click and jump down to a list of donors to see who's giving, and this is again this American, um, uh, America's Road to the Future. Um, you can see, you know, who's been giving money. Um, you know, they're mostly in Iowa, one person from Montana, so that, you know, kind of speaks against the Virginia uh, connection that may just be for compliance, but you know, uh, you know somebody who's filing the paperwork. But it will tell you. You know, you can see on the page who those donors are, and then for ones that have tons and tons of donors, you can just download it as a CSV and a comma-separated value file and open it in Microsoft Excel, and then you can take a look at the numbers and crunch them and do some standardization if you want uh, to see you know who's supporting this organization, and you can do exactly the same thing. Uh, with the expenditures. We have the exact same buttons for what they're spending, and you can see um, uh, where the money is going. Okay, let's go back to uh, the, the Tim Kaine example, and uh, um, this is his page on, uh, on the Follow the Unlimited Money Tracker, and one of the things you can see here as you're looking at this is there's a link to something called a Candidate Profile on Influence Explorer. And Influence Explorer is another tool that the Sunlight Foundation makes. And whoops, and I even made this easier to read here on this slide. Um, Influence Explorer has brings together a whole lot of different kinds of information in one place. Uh, and I think that you know, uh, for our purposes today, I mean, there's a whole host of things you can do with it. You can download data from it. Um, you can get you know bulk data on lobbying, on federal regulations, on contracts and grants. But I think that what we're going to focus on is just trying to get quick information. And you know, if you're following something and trying to background somebody or get some information about a candidate, um, Influence Explorer has very, very quick ways of doing that. And so let me tell you about a few of them. Um, one of the first things that we have, and this is right under, uh, and I'll go back a second. This is, uh, it starts right here, so it's one of the top things. Oh, this bar here, you can set it. Do you want it for the current election cycle or somebody's whole career or a previous election cycle? Um, I'm going to assume that most people are writing about this election cycle right now. And so we have the latest uh, Federal Election Commission data. Um, and it's displayed and broken down into different ways to provide you with a lot of context. And right here you can see uh, we've got a summary. Where is Tim Kaine's money coming from? The bulk of it's from individuals. Uh, some transfers, not very much from PACs, about 7%. We have the total amount that he's raised, uh, $10.3 million. And we tell you that of the 250 candidates running for Senate, he ranks number nine. You can see the total that he's spent, ranking number 23 and his cash on hand. How much cash on, does he have in the bank from the latest FEC uh, reports um, from the Federal Election Commission? You can also see a comparison of him and his challenger. Uh, how are they raising money? You can see that uh, George Allen is a little bit behind. Um, but one other thing that's really, really useful here, and it's a little bit higher up on the page, you can download all of the contributions made to Tim Kaine. Every single, so it's from the FEC, it's from the latest file. They update their bulk data um, uh, once a week. Uh, and that includes things like um, uh, amendments and you know, different filings that come in uh, over the course of, uh, you know, in between reporting periods. So you can get the absolute latest FEC data and download it without having to download some big, huge FEC bulk data file and then pick the Tim Kaine um, um, section out of it. So that, I think, makes your life a lot easier. 
Um, and there's also, incidentally, let me go back, you can also get all of the independent expenditures for or against Tim Kaine. And actually, you know what, I realized I wanted to take a break quickly just to ask if there were questions um, on the unlimited money tracker before we dig any deeper into party time, or I'm sorry, into Influence Explorer. Oh, I'm sorry, there's a question from um, Just Duda. Um, uh, how do you assess if an address is, if a, um, sorry, if a, an ad is negative or positive or an expenditure? <coughs> um, we rely on what the FEC, what the, they tell the FEC in the filing. Because for independent expenditures, and remember this is express advocacy, the kind of vote for, vote against type of spending, and it extends beyond just political advertising. I mean, there are things like rental vans being rented that are being rented against, um, uh, being rented against, um, uh, you know, particular candidates, uh, George Allen or Tim Kaine or whoever, uh, Mitt Romney, Barack Obama, and this is for get out the vote drive. So, um, so that's how we assess how the spending goes, whether it's uh, in opposition to a candidate or in favor of a candidate. Oh, and sorting between primary and general election spending in a state race. I assume you mean um, uh, for a congressional candidate and how much was spent in the primary and how much was spent uh, for the general election. And really, the only way to do it is you, know, you can sort the expenditures by date. And anything before the primary is primary spending. And anything after the primary is, is uh, general election spending. And you have to download the file to do that. We haven't done a breakdown of that. But that would be really useful because we are going to be upgrading it even as we get closer to the elections, maybe we can put in the primary dates for the various races. And I think the reason we haven't is that because there are 50 different state primaries, um, it's a little bit trickier to do it for House and Senate races. But um, and then there's the caucuses and so on. But we'll we'll try to figure out a way to get that um, get that done so you can uh, distinguish between them. So okay, so let me move on. So I mentioned you can download the raw FEC data. You can also download that same uh, Influence Explorer data, I'm sorry, follow the unlimited money tracker data on independent expenditures from the same box. So the top one is, is the contributions of the candidate. The bottom one is the spending by uh, groups that are either supporting or opposing Tim Kaine. But on the same page, we give you that exact same chart. Whoops, I clicked it too fast. Uh, just a summary, and that's that you know summary of all the groups and, and the aggregate of how much they've spent on each candidate. Uh, moving on, let's see. Um, I think we okay. No, that's right. Okay, um, I thought I was skipping a slide. Uh, so we have coded data from OpenSecrets.org as well as the raw data from the FEC. Uh, this comes out a little bit slower. What the Center for Responsive Politics that does OpenSecrets.org does is, is that they hand code a lot of this data. Uh, some of it's done automatically, but a lot of it's done by hand to try to um, standardize data, give it industry codes, and give you donors, top contributors. It lags a little bit behind the raw FEC data. Um, and, and we get it, you know, Center for Responsive Politics does it first, and it takes it a while for us to get it from them and put it up on our site. So this, these numbers will always be a little bit behind what you'd see in the raw FEC data. But the advantage of this is, is that they've standardized all the names and put it together so that you can really see um, who uh, are, you know, the top contributors to a candidate. Um, and you can also see things like who are the top industries. Like here's for Tim Kaine. We see lawyers and law firms are number one. Um, retired, these are usually people who are uh, living off of investments. Uh, when you think about if the kind of folks who have $2,500 to contribute to members of Congress or candidates for Congress, there's the insur securities and investment, business services, and so on. And so these are broken down by industries. And then let's take a look at the contributors. If it will move. Um, there we go. So you can also see who are the top donors to Tim Kaine. And as you look down this list, we've got the League of Conservation Donors or Voters. That's actually a group that kind of passes through um, contributions to candidates, a lot like Blue State. Uh, we've got Aiken Gump. This isn't the, there's an outside spending group with a very similar name. That's not the outside spending group. That's uh, the, um, the pass-through account. 
Uh, you've got Aiken Gump uh, with DC Law Firm and so on. So you've got all these different groups. If you wanted to find out something about one of these organizations, you can just click on the name, and here's Aiken Gump, and it takes you to a page in Influence Explorer that shows you about the organization. And it's set up very much the way, uh, very similar to, but with some important differences from a candidate page. One of them being that we have campaign finance. Candidates we don't have lobbying information on, but we do have the lobbying of the, the, uh, the donors to candidates. Uh, we have information on regulations. We have information on federal advisory committees that these uh, groups may, and I'll explain that uh, in a second. So we have like a little bit of a profile so you can kind of get some idea of what some of these interests might be interested in. And I, as I said, we have the raw FEC data, and actually that would be like the, and I'm going back a second, that would be the contributions that the employees make to the organization's political action committee. We also have, from the Center for Responsive Politics, all of their employees who give money to um, uh, candidates. And we can see some of the top recipients, uh, Barack Obama at the top. Again, Aiken Gump is a law firm, but also a lobbying firm. Um, Barack Obama says he doesn't take any money from lobbyists, but he does apparently take money from firms that lobby. Um, uh, and then you can also see like the top PACs or political party committees that they give to as well. Um, there's another section, as you scroll further down, bundled contributions. And these are contributions that the FEC requires lo registered federal lobbyists to disclose. And you can see um, who uh, the lobbyists for Aiken Gump, as Bill Paxson, has bundled money for the Republican National Committee. You can also see that they've bundled money for the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. And we also have a complete list of bundlers on the site. Um, so you can see it by recipients. You can see are there lobbyists bundling for the candidates that you're covering. Um, and uh, then you can also, if you're interested in particular bundles, this is the uh, bundler tab. If you click on the recipient tab, you get the list of campaigns that have disclosed getting bundles from lobbyists. Basically, if a lobbyist puts together $16,000 in contributions from either his clients or friends or uh, bridge club, um, he, he has to disclose, the campaign has to disclose that he raised that money for them. Uh, going back to that Aiken Gump page, scrolling down further down, we get to the lobbying section, which you can navigate to by using this little blue box. And here we see, uh, because they're a lobbying firm, we show uh, the lobbying that they do for others rather than lobbying on their behalf. And you can kind of, you can see here different clients, a lot of Indian tribes, um, something called the Coalition for 21st Century Patent Reform, Dow Chemical, and so on. You can see the names of individual lobbyists. Uh, I see that we've got uh, Vic Fazio there, former member of Congress. Um, so that'll tell you a little bit something about the, what the firm is lobbying on. And uh, so let's go back and take a look at another Kane donor, uh, Norfolk Southern, uh, at the bottom of his list. Because I just wanted to show you something, of a group that's not a lobbying firm. And it's, again, it's in the same format as Aiken Gump. We start out with the latest FEC data, which just covers what their political action committee is raising. Uh, you get the coded info from opensecrets.org, uh, coded data of who they're giving to and, and broken down by top contributors. And when I looked at this, I thought this was really kind of interesting because I clicked here. And if you look at who Norfolk Southern is going to, I mean, it looks like they're kind of hedging their bet. You've got money going to both George Allen and Tim Kaine. Um, and incidentally, this is all individual giving, not uh, PAC giving. If it's PAC, it's orange. We break down these uh, little lines to show you how much is PAC and how much is individual. Um, scrolling down further for, uh, on this Influence Explorer page, you can see the lobbying done on their behalf. And this is different from Aiken Gump. Again, if it's a lobbying firm, we're going to show you the lobbying they do for others. If it's a company, even with an in-house lobbyist, we're going to show you the lobbying done on their behalf. And you can see how much they've spent. Uh, this is over the last two years because we use an election cycle. Not uh, And lobbying, of course, is disclosed quarterly, but we add up two years of it to try to keep it consistent with what we do with the campaign finance. And then you can see how much um, they've spent uh, on outside firms. Um, you can see the most frequently disclosed issues that come up. Norfolk Southern, of course, the railroad company. It's probably not surprising that they're lobbying on railroads. 
but it's also kind of interesting energy and nuclear power, radio and TV broadcasting, homeland security. So there's a lot of different things that they have their hands in that they're lobbying on. And that can give you some background. Again, if you're looking at a candidate and looking at his top donors, um, what are they after? And particularly if you see a late rush of money coming in, as we sometimes see in the late reports that you may be following from the FEC, and you may see groups that are giving $10,000, $20,000, maybe not enough to crack into a member's top 10, you can look up that organization on Influence Explorer and just get at-a-glance information on what they're lobbying on including the bills that they're focusing on, and these are the most frequently disclosed bills in their lobbying reports over the last couple of years. And again, not a lot of surprises, Railroad Antitrust Enforcement Act, Surface uh, Transportation Board, and so on. Uh, but you can kind of see, and one of the things that you could do if you have time, which I know at this time of year a lot of people don't, is cross-reference and take a look at the sponsors of those bills and see if members that are getting donations from, or if you're following a member, is he getting donations from companies that he's sponsored le legislation that they're lobbying on? Um, scrolling down further, we also have a section on federal regulatory matters. I mean, this is kind of much more the kind of thing you'd want to look at after the election than before it. But you can at least see the kinds of things that they're uh, uh, lobbying the federal government on in terms of lobbying. And these are comments that they make to regulatory dockets. And you can see that, you know, the very first one, it's Norfolk Southern Corporation, a waiver petition. What are they trying to waive? What kind of issue do they have? Is it in Virginia? Uh, is it something that Tim Kaine conceivably could have helped them with when he was governor? Is it something that he could help them with uh, you know, as a senator? Uh, and then the last section is federal advisory committees. These are entities set up by um, the executive branch and they're governed by something called the Federal Advisory Committee Act. Uh, and they have to disclose who their members are. And basically, if the government needs uh, advice, and you know, one of the things, and we can thank the Disney Corporation for this, there was actually a federal advisory uh, committee set up to help the Department of Homeland Security figure out how to quickly move people through airports. And, um, and among the ones that they consulted were the Disney Corporation, because obviously they move a lot of people through Disneyland. Um, but that's the kind of thing that, you know, the government needs advice from the private sector. They set up one of these things. And it's kind of a backdoor way for companies and organizations to lobby the government. So we have a list of all of the federal advisory committees, and uh, we break it down by company so you can see, did they advise the government on a particular council. And this is the National Coal Council, also Surface Transportation Board, and so on. Okay, and so uh, I'm gonna change gears here, and once again, uh, ask and plea, if you have questions, please go ahead and ask us. We would be happy to take them, uh, and I'll give you a few seconds, and uh, you can do it by the chat. You can put a hand up, uh, or we can uh, move on to party time. So I'll give you a few seconds. And I, I'm sorry, I keep forgetting. It's star uh, seven to unmute your phone. If, you, if I, you've forgotten that, uh, you can unmute your phone and, and please feel free to jump in and ask a question. Um, so there's a question, are non-committees the only source for dark money or are there other groups which fit into the dark money category? And the great label, by the way. Um, uh, and I wish, I'm not 100% sure who coined it. I know we were one of the early users of the term dark money. Um, um, Basically, with dark money, what we're talking about is, um, uh, the, you know, 501c4 organizations and nonprofits. But there are potentially other kinds of dark money. And just an example, uh, in several states, including Delaware, you can set up a limited liability corporation. Uh, the only paperwork on file is whoever your registered agent agent is, and your registered agent. You know, and this is basically somebody who files paperwork. They're not a, you know, they're not part of your business. They're somebody you hire to keep your records current. The registered agent is not obligated to tell anybody anything about who actually owns this business unless somebody has a subpoena, obviously. So it would be entirely possible for me to set up the, and it would, this would be a really stupid name if I want to keep myself secret, but the Bill Allison LLC, and then start making contributions or start making independent expenditures, rather, uh, and under Citizens United, anybody can do it. A for-profit co corporation, non-profit corporation. So that's another place where dark money could come from. We haven't seen that yet, but it's entirely possible that that could happen. Um, but right now, as far as the sources of dark money, I mean, it's really those non-profit organizations 
under the Internal Revenue Code Section 501c4, which is a social welfare organization, and 501c6, which is a business league. And some would argue, and I would agree with them in some ways, that labor mu union money can be dark money. The 501c5 organizations that there are, you know, that all, I mean, most of their money is going to be coming from dues, but that's not necessarily all the money they have, and it is possible that there may be some undisclosed contributions coming into labor unions. So, uh, but those are really the groups that we're talking about when we're talking about dark, dark money. Okay. Alrighty, so let's, uh, if there's, an, I'll pause if there's another question. And otherwise, we'll move on to party time. And as I mentioned, uh, in two weeks from today, at this exact same time, uh, we'll be doing a thoroughly in-depth look at party time uh, with all the different kinds of things that you can do with it. Um, but right now, I just thought I'd give you a very short uh, overview. The site's been redesigned, which is one reason to do it. And uh, secondly, it's, uh, you know, I, I just find it to be one of the most handy sites that we do. And this is really the only place that I know of where you can get this data um, uh, for free. And so party time, uh, or in any format, I don't even know that you could pay for this. Uh, party time has its search box right here, and you can type in the name of a politician. Uh, you could also type in the name of a political action committee. We, uh, we have like a bunch of different uh, fundraising invitations. We have a few super PAC invitations, not as many as we'd like. But you can type in the name of an organization and click on it, and here are the results, and this will kind of tell you the different kinds of things that politicians are doing to raise money. And as you see under here, and this is um, this is where we have the results. We have blog posts where you know what we've written about somebody. We have entertainment matches. That means that a lawmaker shows up as a as an event lunch with Governor Tim Kaine, and that's usually somebody else's fundraiser. And in the middle here, pack slash lawmaker matches. That's where we have the invitations to a particular lawmaker. So let's skip ahead uh, and kind of show you what this looks like. Um, these are the ones we have for Tim Kaine. We have one page. I think I actually cut off the bottom because there were a few more than we're showing here. But uh, these are the, we you know, get these invitations from sources. We rely on you know, uh, friends, um, you know, people we've known for a long time. Some of them are lobbyists. Some of them are... Uh, uh, people work with trade associations and so on, but we really kind of do a lot of shoe leather. And if you actually have sources of these and would, wouldn't mind sharing them with Party Time, we would love to be able to put them up. Uh, there's a little button here for uploading. You can upload them as PDF files. It's completely anonymous, but if you're a reporter and you've got a nice cache of, uh, of, party t of invitations like this, we would give you a huge shout out and a huge thanks because we try to do as much as we can to make this complete. Um, so anyway, we get these invitations from sources and we post them online. And here's one, um, you know, which is for Tim Kaine. We have a bunch of different hosts. We have the, where the event is taking place in Los Angeles, California, at the home of, um, and I'm not going to read this, um, and Margo, sorry, Margo and Joe Calabrese. Um, so all, all of this information, we take it and we type it into a database um, and we digitize it so it's all searchable. Um, and not every, you can't search on every field that we enter, but you can get it all as bulk download data. And once the data is digitized, we have, um, you know, the, the way that these breaks down, you have the date of the event, the invitation, the name of the beneficiary and, you know, their party and where they're running. Um, you get the hosts, and these are generally people who've agreed to either donate or raise a certain amount of money for a candidate. So you get something about their sort of their fundraising apparatus. And a lot of times, especially for the Washington, D.C. area invitations, these folks are lobbyists. You get the type of event it is. You know, here it's a reception. Sometimes you have an event at a concert. Sometimes you have lunches, dinners, breakfasts, um, cocktail parties. Uh, and then the location and where it's taking place, and we put in all the information we get from the invitation. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that uh, you know, when you're looking at these, other lawmakers, uh, and if you're following a congressional race with a long-term incumbent or a big uh, fundraiser who doesn't have any opposition, see if he's raising money for other folks. This is a reception for um, Tim Kaine's opponent in Virginia, George Allen, who of course was a senator before uh, he lost in 2006 and is trying to get his old seat back. Um, so this is one that is taking place uh, this afternoon. It's, uh, we have the address here in Washington, D.C. 
the type of event, uh, it's a reception with Eric Cantor and Mitch McConnell, and then we get a list of all the different lawmakers who are going to be there to raise money for uh, George Allen. Now, if you're a lobbyist, and that, you know a lot of the D.C. fundraisers, uh, you get an awful lot of lobbyists and people with business before Washington who go to them, look at all the members of Congress you can meet by going to this one event. Uh, you've got Eric Cantor, you've got the Senate Minority Leader, you've got you know all these different folks who are uh, committee chairman uh, or ranking members. Um, this would be one heck of a party if you want to influence people. So always check for that kind of stuff. And don't be afraid to check for challengers. Um, a lot of the outsiders, particularly if you're covering a close race, and we're starting to see these coming in more and more, and I'm actually having lunch with one of my best sources uh, early next week, and we should have a flood of these because he's one of the best sources for them. A lot of times you get in close races invitations to fundraisers uh, that are sometimes hosted by a group like the Retail Industry uh, Association, or, sorry, the National Retail Federation. Sometimes they're hosted by lawmakers. Sometimes they're held at lobbying firms. But so this challenger who's close in the polls, and there will be some kind of language like this, and it may even say that you know they're up by two points in the latest you know uh, Ipsos poll or whatever, um, and they're trying to convince the Washington insiders, the people that control political action committees, the people that give to people who are in power now, that this is a good investment in the next Congress. So keep an eye out for those and check for challengers in party time because we do get those kinds of invitations. Um, I'm hoping we'll have a lot more um, next week, uh, but we already have some. And you know we're getting down to the wire in terms of raising money. and. Uh, uh, but this is a time in October where somebody will take a day off from the campaign trail to come to Washington for a fundraiser. So keep your eye out for those. Um, one of the great things about party time is that all this data is available and download in different formats. You can get an RSS feed for it. You can get a, a CSV, which is just you know those fields that we type in from uh, the invitations, including like how much money are they asking for, um, the hosts entertainment types, the, the different um, uh, um, you know, venues where things are being held. Um, we have a relational zip, and this is if you're skilled on access or another database program with relational tables. You can quickly see how many members of the Appropriations Committee held fundraisers, or how many members of leadership held fundraisers, or how many incumbents, uh, or how many you know, uh, Senate Democrats versus Senate Republicans. Uh, you know, again, we don't have a complete list of fundraisers. Uh, we don't pretend that we do, but at least you can see from the ones that we know about, um, you know, who's have, holding a whole lot of fundraisers, and you can break it down by committees and, and things like that. And lastly, we have an API. If you have programming skills, you can get to the data that way as well. Um, and as I mentioned, we'll be going into much more depth about what's in party time um, in two weeks. But next week, uh, uncovering the spending behind political ads. And this is going to be showing off a new site that we're doing called Political Ad Sleuth, where, among other things, we've scraped all of the FCC data that television stations are putting up and have made it somewhat understandable. It's, you know, it's, this is data from PDFs, and some of it is kind of ugly and sketchy, so you have to use it with some caveats. But Josh Hatch, and I, I'm hoping uh, Kathy Kiley and uh, the developer for the site, uh, Jacob Fenton and, uh, will, uh, and Daniel Clow will be part of it. Uh, but basically, this will tell, this will tell you, you know, how to track that spending and presidential spending around the country. Uh, and my colleague Josh Hatch will be taking the lead on that. Uh, the following week, October 16th, we'll show you uh, political fundraising unveiled with Anu and Swami, uh, the ins and outs of party times and all the different kinds of things, including like lists of lobbyists or how to get you know, a list of people who are potentially the bundlers for the Romney campaign uh, out of party time. Um, uh, and then the, the other two, uh, something on Ad Hoc, which is a mobile app that we do that you can, uh, it's like Shazam for political ads. You hold it up to the TV, station, TV set, and it runs through our database of political ads, and it can tell you that this is spending by um, you know, Crossroads GPS, and they don't disclose their donors, or this is spending by American Crossroads, and here's their biggest donors. Uh, so that's incredibly useful. And the last, a dark money special, uh, you know, again, our fear is that as we get down to the last days of the election, some of these groups may be popping out of the woodwork. 
This will tell you how much they're spending, who they are, some practical tips on finding out in the last minute, you know, whatever ones we can come up with. And I wish we had a better magic wand to wave, but we don't. But just some ideas that we can help you with, and hopefully that'll be timely for that last week of the election. So at that point, uh, I'm happy to throw open the to questions. And remember, it is star seven to unmute. And uh, please feel free, fire away. OK, and there are a couple of questions. Um, uh, but how come my source gets so many invitations? Um, I do know, and I don't think I'll be giving anything away by telling this. He works for a uh, a fairly, um, you know, old. I shouldn't say old, uh, but you know, mid-sized uh, Washington firm that does. It's a law and lobbying firm. Uh, he's not a lobbyist. Uh, he just practices law. And he's, you know, basically they just get swamped by these invitations because everybody is raising money like crazy, and he, this time more so than ever. But, you know, uh, he first mentioned this to me in 2006. And why they get so many of the challenger ones, I'm just not sure. But he seems to be the best, or his firm seems to be the best source of them. And so he collects them for us. And uh, I wish I know why. I suspect, though, that lots of other people get them, but they're just not as interested in them because they're, they're challengers and they're not. And so they, those may be the first ones to go into the, the circular waste pile. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, there's another question which is really, really hard to ask answer, which is what data has surfaced that you found to be most interesting? And you know, there's just there's a ton of stuff you know all through the presidential and uh, congressional level that's I think really fascinating to follow this time. I mean. We didn't spend any time on you know, how the campaigns are spending money, but I'm really finding that something that's, that's an undertold story and worth looking at. Um, I think that, though, um, you know, right now, the really most, some of the most interesting stuff is tracking where the independent expenditures are made, where the outside groups are spending money. Because in some ways, if you think about who these outside groups are, uh, this is the Karl Roves, the you know the top party officials uh, or former you know DCCC and uh, you know Democratic National Committee folks, and you know these are the these are the insiders insiders who are running these out this quote unquote outside groups, and watching where they're spending money and where they're not spending money in terms of the races, and on the presidential level you can only do that with uh, political ad sleuth, which we'll show next week. Uh, we're still uh, uh, working out some bugs in it, uh, or getting the kinks out and getting it ready to go. But um, uh, on the congressional level, you can really see this happening. And you know, which you know Senate candidates are they supporting? Which ones they aren't? Which ones aren't they? Uh, you know, there's the race in Hawaii, which has gotten actually a lot of attention. I have heroically volunteered to go down there and be on the ground to cover it, but uh, unfortunately, sunlight won't send me. Uh, but you know, but there's been outside spending there that kind of started and stopped, and it's been kind of back and forth. Um, you know, so I, and one of the things I think though is that these super PACs have much better polls than, or access to much better polls than you know we get in the media or in the you know the outside world. And so just following where that spending is happening, I think, is just an incredibly rich story. We are coming up on one full hour in two minutes. Um, so uh, if you want to chime in, uh, please feel free to. And uh, we'll stick around for a little bit longer in case people are typing. Um, don't give yourself uh, uh, repetitive uh, motion syndrome from uh, typing too fast. If you're trying to get something in, we'll stick around for one more minute. But otherwise, thank you so much for participating and for, uh, for um, uh, taking a look at all this. I hope it's helpful. Uh, you can always contact uh, our excellent communications department, uh, Liz and Gab, if you have questions or need help with something. And uh, they can answer a lot of the questions themselves. And if it's something uh, that um, they can't answer, they'll pass, them on, pass you on to us uh, in, in the reporting group, myself, my colleague Kathy Kiley, uh, Josh Hatch, or Anunari and Swami. So we're all happy to help you out. And, uh, we're here for you, so if you, there's stuff that you need uh, a quick answer on, just holler. Uh, we'd be uh, happy to do it. And of course, I'm forgetting my colleague Nancy Watsman. Sorry, Nancy, um, who is also a, an a absolute font of campaign finance information and, and aid. OK, well, we are going to then close up shop. Thanks, everybody, so much. And uh, uh, good hunting. And uh, if there's anything we can do, just holler. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.